Hello everyone and welcome to Optimization Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how to solve multivariable optimization problems in MATLAB. We use the MATLAB function fminCon. We explain how to define the problem, how to solve it, and how to provide constraints and gradients. Gradients are necessary if you want to speed up the computations. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 350 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel and consequently I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Also, if you have any question or a comment about this video tutorial, please leave your question or a comment in the comment section below this video tutorial. Thank you very much! Also, before I start with explanations, I would like to mention that all code files developed and presented in this video tutorial are freely available on my GitHub page. A link to my GitHub page is given in the description below this video tutorial. Here is a brief outline of this video tutorial. We will go from simpler to more complex optimization problems. First, we will consider a simple least squares problem given by this cost function. Then, after we learn how to implement the solution of this least squares problem in MATLAB, we will consider a more complex problem given by this equation. This is a nonlinear constrained least squares problem and we will learn how to implement the solution in MATLAB. Okay, let's start. First, we will consider a simple least squares problem. We consider this problem since we know how to compute the closed form solution of the least squares problem and consequently we can compare the closed form solution with the solution computed by MATLAB. Consider this cost function. Over here x1 and x2 are the optimization variables y1, y2 a11, A12, A21 and A22 are the known quantities. Our goal is to solve this optimization problem. That is, we want to minimize this cost function with respect to X1 and X2. This optimization problem is a least squares problem. It has many practical applications. It is extensively used for sensor calibration, curve fitting, in signal processing and control system design. There are at least two approaches for solving this optimization problem. The first approach is to compute the partial derivatives and to set them to zero. Consequently, we take the partial derivative of this cost function with respect to x1 and as the result we obtain this equation. And we set this equation to zero. Similarly, we compute the partial derivative of this function with respect to x2. Here's the expression and we set this expression to zero. Next, let us introduce these matrices. The matrix A, the vector y and the vector x. Using the basic rules of the matrix vector calculus, we can rewrite the system of equations in this matrix form given by the equation phi where AT is the transpose of A. From this equation, we obtain this equation. The system of equation 6 is often referred to as the system of normal equations. Assuming that the matrix A transpose A is invertible, the solution is given by this equation. Here are a few additional comments. This matrix is called the pseudo-inverse matrix of the matrix A. The matrix A transpose A is invertible if the matrix A has full column rank. This is our baseline solution and we can easily compute this solution by computing the pseudo-inverse of A and this solution will be used to compare the numerical solution computed by the MATLAB optimization solver. Let us learn how to implement this solution in MATLAB. 
Here's how to minimize the least squares cost function in MATLAB. Over here, I define the function called minimize cost function. This function will accept the matrix A, the vector Y, and the vector X0. The vector X0 is the initial guess of the solution. To remind you, the matrix A is defined over here. Here's the vector Y, and there are the input arguments of this function. This function will return several variables given over here. I will explain them later on. In the general case, that is, in the case of solving the constrained optimization problem, I need to specify several matrices and vectors. That is, I need to specify the matrices and vectors defining inequalities, equalities, and lower and upper bounds. Since I'm considering over here unconstrained optimization problem, all these vectors and matrices are empty. The next step is to define the optimization options and the parameters of our optimization solvers. For that purpose, we're using this function called optim options. We specify the name of the solver, that is, we are using the fmin constraint MATLAB function. Over here, we select the algorithm. I selected interior point method. However, you can also select other methods such as SQP, active set, or trust region reflective. Over here, we are saying that we are not going to specify the gradient of the cost function. Consequently, we have false over here. Then, this parameter display, iter, means that we will display the progress, that is, we will display iterations while the optimize, optimizer is solving the problem. Over here, we specify the max function evaluations. Then, we specify use parallel true. This option is very useful if you have a powerful computer with many processors. And then, you can set this parameter to true and you can use all the computation power. Then we set the optimality tolerance and we set the stop, the step tolerance. The next step is to define a function that will return the value of the cost function for a given variable x. And here it is. What will happen over here? We will specify x and for given x, this function will return the value of the cost function. Namely, this least square cost function can be written like this. J is equal to norm of Y minus AX. Two, two. And here it is. Again, for given X, this function will return the value of J. And here it is. Once we defined our cost function, we can proceed with fmin constraint. The first input argument of fmin constraint is actually the cost function. Then we specify the initial guess and we specify these matrices that define the inequalities, equalities, lower and upper bounds. In our case, these vector and matrices are empty. And over here, finally, we specify the options. And that's it. The next step is to save this function. So click on editor. Over here, click on save, save as. I will save this function in this folder, codes optimization. The next step is to add this function to the MATLAB path. This is a very important step since we will be calling this function from another MATLAB script and MATLAB needs to know the location of this file. To set the path, we click on home and we click on set path. Then we click on add with subfolders. Over here, I need to locate my folder. Here it is. And I will select this folder. Click on close and that's it. Okay, next, let's call this function from another file. And here's the file I wrote. First, 
I'm generating an arbitrary coefficient matrix A and I'm specifying the right-hand side vector Y. Then I'm specifying in the initial guess for the solution. Here it is. Over here, I'm solving the problem. I'm calling the function minimize cost function. I'm specifying the matrix A, the vector Y, and the initial guess. This function will execute this code and it will return these variables. It will return the solution, function value, exit flag, and output. That is, it will return the variables and the vectors returned by fmin constraint. Then, over here, I compute the least square solution in the closed loop form. I do that for comparison. That is, I simply implement this equation, since this equation is served as the baseline. Once I do that, I compare the computed solution with the exact solution. That is, I compute the relative error. Let's execute this code and let's see the result. First of all, let's clear the workspace. And over here, I will solve the optimization problem. Okay, let's analyze what happened. You can see over here the iterations, you can see the function value, you can see the first order optimality, and you can see the norm of the step. The function value goes down, goes down, perfect. And we found a local minimum that satisfies the constraints. Perfect. Here's the solution. That is, this is the solution computed by MATLAB. And this is the final function value. We have the exit flag 1. This means that we computed the solution up to the specified tolerances. And we see this structure over here. Okay. Now, let's compute the exact solution by computing the pseudo-inverse. Here it is. And finally, let's compare two solutions. Okay, we can see that the error is really small. Consequently, the MATLAB optimization solver found the correct solution. Perfect. That was a solution of a simple least squares problem. Let us now consider a more complex optimization problem defined by the equation number 8. The cost function j is defined over here. We are minimizing this cost function with respect to x1, x2, and x3. This is a constrained optimization problem simply because the optimization variables x1, x2, and x3 should belong to these intervals. That is, we are searching for x1, x2, and x3 that are inside of these bounds. This cost function is also a least squares cost function. However, this is a non-linear least squares function. To see that, we can simply write this cost function like this. Here's how to implement the solution in MATLAB. Here's the wrapper function called minimize cost function. The input argument of this cost function is initial guess of the solution. This is 3 by 1 vector that we specify from another script. Next, we need to define the constraints. Over here, we can observe that we only have bound constraints. We don't have inequality and equality constraints. Consequently, these matrices and vectors will be empty. And over here, we specify lower and upper bounds. This vector takes into account the lower bounds. The lower bounds are minus 100, minus 200, and minus 300. And consequently, over here, we write minus 100, minus 200, and minus 300. Next, we need to specify the upper bounds. We have the upper bounds of 100, 200, and 300. Consequently, over here, we specify 100, 200, and 300. 
The next step is to define the options. Here are the options. They are the same as in the previous case. We have f min constraint, that is, we are using the f min constraint solver. We specify the algorithm interior point. We are not specifying the gradient. When the optimization solver is running, we will disp display iterations. We specify the max function evaluations, optimality tolerance, and step tolerance. The next step is to define the cost function. And here is the cost function. Here is the mathematical form of the cost function. We simply need to define this vector and we need to compute the two norm squared of this vector. And here it is. Vector f and the two norm. To repeat, for a given x, this function will return the value of our cost function. The next step is to call f main constraint. We specify the name of the cost function, we specify the initial guess, we specify inequality and equality matrices and vectors, and we specify the vectors of lower and upper bounds given over here. And finally, we specify options, and that's it. The next step is to save this function. And make sure that the folder is in the path. Consequently, click on Home, click on Set Path, and make sure that the folder is still in the path. Perfect. Here's the driver code for using the function. First of all, we need to specify the initial guess of the solution. Here it is. Over here, we solve the problem. Let's run this code. Okay, we can see over here the progress, the computed solution, exit flag, and the structure that can be used to debug the solver. Perfect. Let's look into the initial value of our cost function. Here it is. Over here, I'm substituting the initial guesses of x1, x2, and x3 into the cost function. This is how we do it in MATLAB. This is the vector, that is this vector, and I'm simply computing the two norm, and I square the two norm. I'm doing this since I want to compare the initial value of the cost function with the final computed value. Consequently, I need to compute the final value of the cost function. I take my solution returned by minimize cost function wrapper and I substitute this solution into the cost function to obtain the final value. And let's see the difference. Over here is the initial value of the cost function and over here is the final value of the cost function. And by comparing these two numbers, that is over here we have around 10,000 and over here we have 30, we can see that our optimization solver is actually working. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.